43 of, of Camp Alt. And it's a pretty short lecture uh, for mainly because one, I think the textbook does a really well, a good job of explaining it. So I just want to provide like most of, mostly an overview and then ideally you'll get a lot of the, inter the really nice information in the textbook. And two, it's Thanksgiving break. So you all probably have better things to do. So I'll just try to keep this as short and quick as possible. All right, uh, and let me just get into it then. All right, so an overview of the immune system is that it's mainly based on, uh, it's, the, its main purposes are for reconnaissance, uh, recognition, and response. So, and what that means is basically it's trying to look for the, any possible threats and then recognize those threats. And then based on the recognition, uh, act to mitigate or counter those threats in some way possible. And this is just because animals must de defend themselves from pathogens and toxins that they encounter. And there are two main kinds of defense that the immune system has that has evolved to counter these threats, which are uh, innate immunity and acquired immunity. Uh, so the first type is innate immunity and it's basically present before any exposure to pathogens uh, has occurred at all. And it's effective from the time of birth and it's largely just nonspecific re responses to pathogens rather than targeted responses that target like specific proteins on pathogens or specific, um, I guess, nucle nucleic acid sequences of pathogens. So it's just indiscriminate action against anything that's deemed to be a threat. The next type of immunity is uh, acquired immunity, which is also called adaptive immunity. And it's called adaptive or acquired because it develops after exposure to uh, in, in agents that induce it, like microbes, toxins, or other types of foreign substances. And this involves very specific responses to pathogens. So you can think of things like recognizing, say, the spike proteins on a virus, and then based on the recognition of the particular spike protein, which it has already encountered before, uh, it acts in a way to counter that uh, particular pathogen. And this is just the basis of how vaccines work, because you're basically providing sort of providing adaptive immunity by exposure to a weakened form of the pathogen, and then uh, based on based on that exposure, uh, the initial exposure, you're going to act against the pathogen. And then uh, innate immunity provides broad defenses against infection, and uh, it provides uh, defenses against. Uh, pathogens that successfully break through the animal's external defenses. And uh, after which, uh, the, and a pathogen, so a pathogen that, that encounters external defenses, like say the skin or the, or the uh, cilia lining your respiratory and digestive tracts or any other uh, mechanical barriers to pathogens will then encounter innate cellular and chemical, chemical uh, mechanisms, which will then impede the attack uh, on the body in an indiscriminate matter, no matter what specific pathogen that pathogen happens to be. And so the external defenses that I talked about include, like I mentioned, uh, the skin, which is, provides just a physical barrier against any, vi any, path any pathogens or toxins, and the mucous membranes, which help trap pathogens and by, uh, by, cat by like causing uh, the, pathogen the pathogens to adhere to the mucous membranes. And these are just physical barriers as opposed to more like chemical barriers, which will like target and break down or engulf the pathogen, the microorganisms and viruses. And so cells of the mucous membrane secrete mucus, which is just a viscous fluid, uh, largely water-based that traps microbes and other particles. Uh, some of the internal cellular and chemical defenses. So they depend largely on phagocytosis, which is the, the, a cell kind of expanding outwards, like kind of, kind of like forming arms to expand and wrap around a, for a piece of foreign matter, like a virus or, a, or say a protein or some sort of microorganism. And then what it'll do is it'll wrap around the organism and then it'll engulf it and then, in, and then take it into the cell into the intracellular part of this, uh, the cell. And then once it's inside the cell, uh, it'll break down the foreign substance using methods such as lysosomes, which will release uh, lysozymes, which will uh, target the proteins and 
uh, target the proteins and lipids of any foreign substances and then just break them down so that they can't do any more harm. So this is largely done by just phagocytes, which are types of white blood cells. And the, in addition to ingesting any invading microorganisms or uh, antigens, they in also initiate the inflammatory response. So macrophages are a specific type of phagocyte and they can be found migrating throughout the body and are found in various different organs of the lymphatic system, which, and the lymphatic system includes things like the thymus and the spleen, and is largely involved in uh, just the capture of like pathogens and the fluids and, and from the bodily fluids. Uh, some of the, and so there are a lot of uh, proteins that function in the innate defense system, and these are known as uh, antimicrobial proteins. And these proteins attack uh, the microbes directly by impeding their, re their reproduction. And uh, this can be done by just, for example, if you have a virus, uh, what you do is you have a protein that targets, say, it's a uh, DNA or RNA sequence. And then that protein would, uh, cut, would cut up the, the DNA or RNA sequence so that the could no longer function in replication. And if you had, say, a bacteria, which would replicate via uh, my, like a binary fission, you would release some sort of protein that would um, prevent that binary fission from occurring. So like your protein could say bind to certain parts of the microbe DNA and then prevent it from replicating. And yeah, there's just many different possible mechanisms to do that since it's just really easy to mess things up or much easier than it is to actually cause them to happen. Uh, about, so there's about 30 proteins that make up the complement system and the comp and the complement system causes a lysis of the invading cells and helps trigger inflammation. And these include proteins called interferons, which provide innate defense against viruses, and they also help activate macrophages. Uh, and then there's also the inflammatory response, uh, and that happens in local inflammation in which uh, histamine and other chemicals are released from injured cells. And uh, this promotes changes in blood vessels that allow for more fluid, uh, more phagocytes and antimicrobial proteins to enter the tissues. So histamine is just a derivative of the amino acid histidine and it's released by these cells called mast cells in response to uh, inflammation. And it's actually the, uh, it's actually, it's the compound that that causes the uh, allergic reaction uh, and that's that uh, the allergic reaction response to uh, antigens. So that's why you get like uh, severe responses to allergies or like redness and, and itchiness when during like uh, when you get like a contact allergy. Uh, and then the changes in the blood vessels that it promotes are called uh, vasodilation in which the blood vessels basically just enlarge and by Allowing the blood vessels to enlarge, you allow uh, you allow more more uh, more things, the more repair mechanisms to get to the injured site, uh, and then the injured site can be repaired faster, which would prevent the loss of more blood and more damage. Uh, so, in the acquired or adaptive immune system, uh, lymphocytes provide specific defenses against uh, infection, and this is uh, called and this is a acquired immunity, uh, and it's the second major type of defense uh, and involves the activity of the lymphocytes, like I just mentioned. So uh, antigen re recognition by lymphocytes is uh, largely done by two main types of lymphocytes and vertebrates, which are B lymphocytes or B cells and T lymphocytes or T cells. And there's a bunch of various different types of these types of B and T cells. And they circulate through the blood and they are looking for uh, antigens that uh, to elicit a response against. Uh, and they can do this because the plasma membranes of B and T cells have about 100,000 uh, antigen receptors that all function uh, in antigen rec recognition and uh, allow for uh, many different types of antigens to be recognized. So because each of the receptors is specific to a certain type of antigen. 
So B cell receptors bind to specific intact antigens, and they're often called membrane antibodies or membrane immunoglobins. And they're called immunoglobins because they're uh, made of, they're uh, globular proteins that function in the immune response. And the main distinction, the, one of the main distinction distinguishing features is that they just bind to the specific and intact antigens. Uh, T cell receptors for antigens. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the T cell receptors for the antigens and the role of MHC or the massive histocompatibility complex. So uh, each T cell receptor consists of two different polypeptide chains, which are uh, um, which are the A chain, the or the alpha chain, and the B or beta chain. Uh, it also has a, uh, and each of the chains have different parts. So first off, you have a disulfide bridge, which is formed by a uh, linkage in two cysteine amino acids. So each of the, sul the sulfurs in each of the cysteines form a bond, form a very strong covalent bond together, and that, that creates a really strong bond between the alpha chain and the beta chain of the antigen binding site. Uh, so you also have uh, you have a bunch of constant regions. So these are regions that are constant throughout each all throughout all of the T cell receptors. And you also have variable regions, and these are the, re the regions of proteins of protein that change. And based on the, the change that they the change in the different the differences between each receptor, uh, that those differences allow each in, in the variable regions allow different receptors to recognize uh, different protein uh, different uh, antigens. Uh, right here is the transmembrane jet region. So this is just a, re a region that's very rich and uh, hydrophobic um, protein uh, amino acids like phenylalanine or uh, leucine, uh, isoleucine, alanine, just things like that, that just allow the thing to pass through the membrane. Uh, and then you can notice that there's, pro there's like one exception to that, which is the disulfide bridge itself is uh, made up of cysteines, which is a polar amino acid. And then this is just the cell that the, uh, the, the protein is embedded in. So T cells, what they do is they bind to small fragments of antigens instead of like the actual uh, whole antigen, like how, what the B cells do, they bind to fragments of the antigens and they're bound to a uh, normal cell, cell. And those are the T cells are the receptors are bound to cell surface proteins called uh, the, the fragments, sorry, are bound to cell surface proteins that are called massive histocom histocompatibility co complex molecules. And these MHC molecules are encoded by a family of genes called the major histocompatibility complex. Uh, so uh, infected cells base produce these MHC molecules, and then they bind to the fragments of the antigens that have infected these cells. And then uh, after after which uh, the MHC molecules are transported to the cell surface. And this is a process called antigen presentation because it, it basically just presents the antigen that infected the cell and allows for the nearby T cells to then detect the antigens fragments that are displayed on the cell surface by the MHC molecule. And then once the T cell just detects that antigen presentation, it can then act against the antigen and by attacking it. Uh, so class one and um, MAC molecules are found on almost all uh, nucleated cells of the body. So that would include things that, that are not like say red blood cells because those do not have nucleus nuclei. And then uh, they display peptide antigens to cytotoxic, cytotoxic uh, T cells. Uh, right here, you can see two depictions of MAC molecules. Uh, on, the, on the right is a more just a uh, simple diagram that just shows the basic parts, which are uh, an alpha alpha chain part and a beta microglobulin. So these are just two different polypeptide chains that make up the whole uh, MHC molecule. The alpha part is just divided into an alpha one and alpha two sub, subunit, uh, subunits and the alpha three part portion. So the alpha one and alpha two portions are mainly function in binding to the antigen so that it can be bound and presented at the surface. And then the alpha three part is just binding to the cell surfaces. And on the left right here, you can see the different uh, portions except in a, in, a, in a 3D model of the protein. So this is like the protein as it would appear uh, interest, 
intracellular uh, on the surface of the cell. You can see the alpha part is the green portion with the alpha two and alpha one unit subunits up here, and then the alpha three subunit right here. And then the beta microglobulin part is uh, bound in orange to the alpha portion. And then this purple portion right here is a viral protein. And so basically the, the MHC molecule is bound to that viral protein and in this case. So you can see like how it would present it on the surface of the cell. And if you wanna uh, check out the model uh, and like mess around with it, you can also, in addition to viewing like the surface of it, you can also just uh, remove the surface model and just view like a model of the different uh, polypeptides that make it make up the protein. And you can remove the and you can remove the virus. Look at the binding site of that. You can do a lot of really nice things with that. So I've included a link to RCSB, which is the website that or the protein database where you can get, look at all of these really nice proteins. And then there's also a class two MHC molecules, which are located mainly on dendritic cells, uh, macrophages and B cells. And then these display antigens to helper T cells. So uh, as, B and, as, as B cells and T cells are maturing in the bone and the thymus, and the thymus is one of the organs in the lymphatic system, uh, their antigen receptors are tested for possible self-reactivity. And because lymphocytes bearing recept receptors for antigens are, uh, lymphocytes that are bearing receptors for antigens that are already present in the body are destroyed by apoptosis or rendered uh, non-functional because you wanna make sure that you don't react to anything that's any, any, any like important things that are already present in the body or else when you have self-reactivity, that's really dangerous because then the, the immune cells of the body will seek out uh, antigens that are, are, that, are, that are proteins that are uh, important to the functions of the cell. And then when that happens, you have a lot of things that go wrong because you destroy the, pro you destroy the proteins that are necessary to the function of the cell. And then the immune system just acts against the body, which can lead to a lot of uh, diseases and bad, bad conditions. Uh, so one of the types of T cells is a cytotox cytotoxic or natural killer T cell. Uh, and what it does is it binds to infected cells, uh, cancer cells, and transplanted tissues. And uh, it, bi it binds to a class one MHC molecule on an infected body cell. And so the binding of that will activate of the class one MHC complex that, uh, that is presenting an antigen will activate a cytotoxic T cell. And then it'll differentiate it into an active killer T cell, which will then be able to seek out and destroy the antigen that is that the MHC molecule presented. So active and passive immunization uh, are it's another important topic. So active immunity develops naturally in response to an infection. And like I mentioned before, it can develop uh, following immunization, which is uh, also called vaccination, in which you just take uh, a weakened form of the antigen uh, injected into the body along with a, a bunch of, a couple other things like uh, a lipid nanoparticle to make for better, better delivery, uh, some sugars for stabilization. And then, and then once it's injected in, uh, the, it'll be able to, it'll be able to help the, the T cells and the adaptive immune system recognize that antigen. So then the body can gen act against that act against the antigen. And then uh, allergies are exaggerated or hypersensitive responses to certain antigens that are called allergens. And this is just basically the body having an overreaction to something which could then have be harmful because you're acting against something that's usually commonly present, like say pollen, which can lead to problems. And then and localized allergies such as hay fever, IgE antibodies, which are just a type of antibodies produced by the, the, um, by the body, uh, are produced after the first exposure to, a, and that are produced after the first exposure to an allergen attached to receptors on mast cells. And the next time that an, an the allergen enters the body, uh, it binds to mast cells uh, that are associated with IgE molecules. Then after which the mast cells will release the histamines and other mediators, which will cause the vascular changes and the typical symptoms of hay fever, 
which are the itchiness, swelling, and other things that are associated with uh, histamine release. And I believe that's pretty much it for uh, the recorded part of this lecture. I'm gonna stop sharing now. And I think we don't have like anyone to do a Kahoot with anyway, so.